All right, this video is going to cover how to calculate a correlation as well as find the p-value in Excel. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is what my variables mean in this data set. So this data set is available in our module. It's called self-concept among men. So I have five variables here, intimate, friend, common, academic, and general. I have a key over here that indicates what each of these variables mean. So, for example, intimate means high scores on this variable indicate that respondents have a positive self-concept and intimate relationships. So I want to know what's the relationship between all of these variables, okay? So I'm going to go to my data tab and go to data analysis. If it's not here, remember you can always reinstall it. I'm going to click on correlation. And then you'll notice here in correlation, there's only one input box. So remember, we have really switched gears when we're talking about correlations. With t-tests and ANOVAs, we were looking at the differences between groups. Now we are looking at the relationships among variables. So in this one box, I'm going to highlight everything. All five columns, all of the data. You'll notice that I've also highlighted the names of the columns. So I'll have to click this labels in the first row. My columns is where I have my data. I don't have them organized in rows. Now my output range, I'm going to put right here. Okay, so this is your dialog box for a correlation. Now remember, this is step 3a. We have to find the correlation value. Okay, now I'm just going to pick a couple of these. So I've done my correlation matrix, and I'm going to pick one to focus on for this particular um, example. Okay, so I'm going to go with um, academic and general as my correlation. Okay, so what is the relationship between academic self-concept, which indicates they have a positive self-concept in their scholarly knowledge, and just a general self-concept? Okay, this is a positive correlation. That is what value? I'm going to call this weak. Okay? Now it's a positive weak correlation. Now I want to have to go on to step 3b, which is where we find our significance. Okay, so step 3a is getting the correlation matrix and finding the specific two. Okay? Step 3b is figuring out the p-value. So for the p-value, I'm going to use regression. This is way different than what your book says, so make sure that you watch this over and over and over again, okay? So I'm going to pick regression to find the p-value. Now this box, you'll see, looks a little different. Input y range, input x range. Don't worry about that right now. Um, it will come in whenever we get to the next module, okay? So the two variables I'm looking at are academic and general. So I'm going to go make this my y range. It does not matter with correlations which one is your x and which one is your y. I could have put general in as the y if I wanted to. I'm going to put this below here. So I've got labels because I've highlighted my labels, my output range. I'm going to put below my correlation matrix. Now here's my summary output. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. Now we need several things from this. First thing we need is my multiple R. This is your check. Does this number match this number? The multiple R will always be the correlation. I'll say should match correlation in 3A. But it will be the absolute value. So if this is a negative correlation up here, this will still show as a positive. We need the number of observations, and then we need this significance, okay? So, degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is the number of people minus two. So degrees of freedom is 78, and I'm gonna note that here next to my observations. Okay, so I can see that my correlation significance right here, 0.02, that's less than 0.05. So we reject ooh, the null. There is a 
significant, oh my gosh, I'm sorry for my spelling, there is a significant relationship. Okay, this is how to calculate it in Excel. My next video will cover how to write all of this up in EPA format.